welcome to Season 3 of the Baby Names Podcast, naming the world one baby at a time. Here are your hosts, the Moss Sisters. I'm Jennifer Moss. And I'm Mallory Moss. And we're the founders of BabyNames.com. And we're sisters, too. So says our DNA. (laughs) And speaking of DNA, we've had some family DNA drama. Not going to go into it. But buyer beware. If you get your family tested, you might get some surprises. That's right. But Mallory and I are 100% sisters. Anyway, our first segment is interesting names we found since the last episode. And speaking of the last episode, um, I started the novel Life and Death, which is the retelling of Twilight, but with gender reversal. Can I just say I bought it and it'll take a month? It is really hard to read because I'm always trying to reference the original characters. So it's like, it always takes me out of the story. But Ah. Bella Swan is now Beau Swan. B-E-A-U or Beaufort. Oh, this isn't the new one. No, this isn't the new one. It was written like four years ago. She rewrote the Twilight story like many different times. So, and Edward is Edith, E-D-Y-T-H-E. So I don't know. I don't know if I get into it, but if you guys, if you have started Life or Death or Midnight Sun, let us know if you like them because I want to know if it's worth continuing reading. Uh. The other name that I like this week, you'll like it, it's French, is Lieu, L-I-E-U-X. It's a French word meaning places, but I saw it as a name, and I assume it's pronounced like Lou or Liu, just with a little Y in there. That reminds me of the name Luke, like French director Luc Besson. He did one of my favorite 80s movies, Subway. I'm all over girl names this week. I've been listening to some alternative from the last few years, and the names Delilah and Ophelia came up. They sound a lot alike to me. It would be a cute twinsy pair of names. (laughs) Yeah, because they're not too matchy-matchy. Right. But they're both pretty trendy right now. Yeah, I mean, not top ten trendy. No, no. Delilah's meaning is delicate or weakened. Not weekend, but weakened, like not strong. Ophelia means helper. And since it is August, I have to mention the name Leona, which of course means lion. And now for our topic of the week, names of names, our own name glossary. So do you know what an onomast is or a toponym? We're going to go over names of name stuff because, of course, we love names. I for sure know what an onomast is. It's someone who studies names in an academic sense. Correct. Professor Dr. Cleveland Kent Evans is an onomast. Since we do names for more public information and social research rather than academic research, I really wouldn't call us onomasts, but we are onomastic enthusiasts. I like that. So let's go through our name glossary and discuss each term that has to do with names and naming. Woohoo! First, one of my faves, acronym. An acronym is a word or name formed by the first letters of a group of words. So some examples would be NASA, N-A-S-A, which stands for National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or some people might not know this, scuba, like as in scuba diving. That comes from self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. So I guess it was actually the equipment. Laser is an acronym. Light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Radar, that was a character name on MASH. Mm -hmm. That stands for radio detection and ranging. And GIF, graphics interchange format, which is why it's a GIF and not a GIF, people. GIF is a peanut butter, not a file format. Now for one of my favorite terms. Alliterative names. 
two names starting with the same letter. Examples include Marilyn Monroe, Joe Jonas, David Duchovny, and the one and only Mallory Moss. Mm-hmm. Alliterative names are good for naming characters and humans because they tend to be more memorable. And like we said in our superheroes episode, Stan Lee liked to use alliterative names for his characters, like Pepper Potts, Peter Parker, and Bruce Banner. Say that three times fast. An aptronym, A-P-T-R-O-N-Y-M, is a name that is aptly suited to its owner. For example, I know a woman whose last name is Dollar, and she works in a bank. Now, I always thought Lorena Bobbitt was an aptronym, and it was pretty funny because she bobbed it off. And if you don't know who that is, go to the Google and look it up. And Usain Bolt, a Jamaican sprinter and Olympic champion. True. Now, at the American Name Society conference one year, we had a presentation about aptronyms by a woman whose name was Verby, who was an English teacher. (laughs) That's funny. And studies show that if one of your names refers to an occupation, like if your last name is Doctor, you're actually more likely to study medicine. So, Jennifer, how come we didn't become herbologists? I don't know, because that's not our original name. Uh, Then how come we don't study moose? Mooses. (laughs) Why aren't we mooseologists? Oh, yeah, okay. (laughs) Anyway, it must be true, because I had a dentist named Dr. Payne, True story. He introduced himself as Dr. David, though. (laughs) That's aptronym. Moving on, an appellation is a name or a title given to a person or a thing. So an appellation could be the sound of music or the Windy City or Miss America. Hmm, I like that term, appellation. What is your appellation, please? It's very fun, sir. Okay, so we move on to anonymous. Anonymous means without a name, literally. And it's usually used for a published work or a quote with no known author. Or people would use this if they didn't want to reveal their identity. They would publish something anonymously. So my childhood nickname was Nani. And I figured if I wanted a pen name, it would be a Nani Moss. Get it? Got it. I just don't want it. (laughs) Anyway, an astronym is a name of a star or constellation. Celeste, Orion, Luna. Dawn, Aurora, Nova, Sirius, Vega, and Ursa, for example. I'd like to point out that Luna means moon, which is not a star. It's a moon. Okay, well, sorry. (laughs) Okay, then there's birth name or maiden name. And that's the original surname before your surname is changed for any reason. We've talked about what to call this and have gone back and forth because maiden is such an antiquated term. But then birth name has a different meaning to those who have changed their names, like trans individuals. All right. Well, correctonym, a name of a fictional character reflected in his or her personality traits, is one of my favorite words. (laughs) Correctonym. For example, Dr. Horrible, the Hulk, Mrs. Widebottom. Mm -hmm. Obviously more prevalent in children's books or fantasy than, say, contemporary literature. Ah, you know what this reminds me of is Caractacus Potts from my favorite, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, who is certainly quite the character. Yeah, and a little cracked a kiss. Yes, he was. (laughs) A cognomen is a term from ancient Rome referring to a person by their family or last name. An example would be Caesar for Gaius Julius Caesar. And it's popular kind of in modern times, calling someone by their last name usually happens with guy buddies or in an athletic situation. Yes. Codename or cryptonym, a false name given to a person who is undercover or part of a covert operation. Example, the eagle has landed. People protected by the Secret Service have code names. Bill Clinton was Eagle. Hillary was Evergreen. Ooh, Evergreen. Barack Obama was Renegade, and Michelle was Renaissance. Mm. Trump is the Cheeto. <laughs> what? Oh, you set me up. 
<laughs> it's mogul. And Melania is muse. Cryptonym. I like that. An eponym is a word that is derived from a name like Elizabethan or McCarthyism. An ethnonym is a name given to an ethnic group or tribal alliance like the Potawatomi or the Jews. A demonym refers to native inhabitants of a particular place that it is derived from the name of the place, like the Irish or Americans. The difference between the two would be like an ethnonym would be the Jews, but a demonym would be the Israelis. Even though it looks like the word demon, demonym is from the Greek demos, meaning the people. Yeah. Now, a Family name is another name for the hereditary surname of a family. Speaking of which, I just uploaded a list of 1,000 most popular U.S. surnames and their meanings. So take a look at that. That's on our name blogs. All right. Well, this will shock everyone. <laughs> the first name is the first of your given names, also called your given name or forename. A formal name is the full name of a person. So that would be prefix, first, middle, or middles, last, and suffix as used on official documents. So Jack Kennedy's formal name is John Fitzgerald Kennedy. It could also mean your full name as opposed to your nickname, like Becky's formal name is Rebecca. All right, and let's not forget gamer names, a pseudonym chosen to represent a persona or character in a video game. Example, water magic. We have an episode coming up about this, don't we, Jennifer? We do, and we have some super special guests on this episode, huge in the gaming genre, so stay tuned for those. Ooh. A homonym is where two names are spelled differently but sound the same when spoken. For example, Aiden with an E-N and Aiden with an A-N. Isabel and Isabel with an L-E. Now that comes from the root word homos, meaning the same. A hydronym is given to a body of water. Mm. Example, the Nile, the Pacific Ocean, or Lake Michigan, from the Latin hydro. Meaning water. A hyphenated name is when a couple chooses to use both their surnames to create a new last name, usually with a hyphen in the middle. Example, Jennifer Smith marries John Pierce, and they change their names to Jennifer Smith Pierce and John Smith Pierce. And let's see, initials or monogram, the first letters of a person's first, middle, and last name. The monogram is actually the motif or graphic formed by overlaying one's initials. Monograms first appeared on coins as early as 350 BCE, where they would put the monogram of the city's name, like Achaia would be AX for Alpha and Chi. Cool. Your last name or your surname is your family name. For Europeans, it comes last in your formal name. For Chinese names, it comes first in your formal name. Yes, indeed. Middle name, the part of a person's name occurring between the first and family names, as a second given name. Sometimes those were baptismal names. And it's also a good place to put names to honor your family, but those you don't quite want to give your child. All right. A namesake is a person who someone is named after, usually within the same family, but sometimes a famous person. And a mononym is when someone is known by one name, like Socrates, Madonna, Beyonce, Prince, or Grimes. Who's Grimes? We talked about her. X A E X two two's mother. Oh, that's right. Then there's a nickname, a form of your given name indicating closeness or affection. For example, Jimmy for James can also be a name for ridicule or to draw attention to a personal characteristic. Example, red for someone with red hair, which is funny because, you know, I live in a small town and we have two reds. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we talked about nicknames in our History of English Names episode. It was called an 
Iknin, mm-hmm. literally meaning also name, and started gaining popularity in the Middle Ages. Some Ik names evolved into surnames. And people would say an Ik name, an Ik name, an Ik name, and then it just kind of formed into nickname. Oh, I see. That was a good episode, number 31. So, hey, Mal, guess what an autonym is? You, because you're odd. Oh, funny. It's the name of a street or road, like Main Street or Abbey Road. As we said earlier, onomastics is the study of the origin, history, and use of proper names. Babynames.com is a member of the American Name Society, which is an organization that promotes onomastics, the study of names. If you're interested in becoming a member, go to AmericanNameSociety.org. Yeah, plug, plug. A patronym is a surname that indicates the father's given name. For example, O'Brien or Harrison, son of Harry. There are a lot of patronyms on our 1,000 most popular U.S. surnames list. So look it up. Mm -hmm. Then there's a pen name, a pseudonym used by an author to conceal his or her identity. We had an episode about this, number six. Mm -hmm. Famous pen names include Mark Twain or Samuel Langhorne Clemens, George Orwell, Eric Arthur Blair. I had no idea that was a pen name. Me either. (laughs) Richard Bachman, who is also Stephen King, as we know. And John le Carré, David John Moore Cornwell, who probably has the coolest reason for using a pen name. He was still a spy in MI5 when he wrote his first novel, Call for the Dead dead. I think that's so cool that he was really a spy. I have to start reading his novels now. I think I, is he, did he write Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy? That was a good one. Yeah, I think so. A pet name is not for your pets in this instance. It's a name used to express affection for a person. Examples would be Honey, Sweetie, Schmoopy from Seinfeld, or Choochie Face. From Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, we managed a second reference. (laughs) An occupational name is usually a surname originally derived from the occupation of a person. Examples include John Baker or George Mason. And a lot of those have become pretty trendy as given names, too, lately, like Mason, Thatcher, and Archer. Okay, one of my faves, a palindrome name. It's a name that is spelled the same forwards and backwards. And a good example is an old friend of our dad's, Al Kukla. (laughs) A-L-K-U-K-L-A. Other names that are palindromes are Ada, L, E L L E, Bob, Eve, and Hannah with an H. You're a Kukla. Anyway, a pseudonym, a name used by a person... That is other than their legal or given name. It's usually used to hide who they are in their career. A pen name is a subset of pseudonyms. Right. And so is a screen name, which is a pseudonym used to indicate your persona online on any given website or game, like CubsFan88. All right. Well, unfortunately, we do need to mention the slave name, which was a name given to a slave by a slaveholder. In America, the slave was not allowed to use their given African name. They were renamed, often given a Christian first name, and the slaveholder's surname. Mm -hmm. A stage name is a pseudonym of a performer. Example, Snoop Dogg, whose real name is Calvin Cortazar Broadus Jr., or Iggy Azalea, who is Amethyst Amelia Kelly. I think her name is so cool. I don't know why she changed it. I'm going to ask her. You do that. Or Judy Garland, whose original name was Francis Gum. Yes. A street name is not the name of the streets, which we said was an autonym, but an urban slang name originally coined by street criminals to avoid identification or to sound tough, but became trendy starting in the 90s for performers as well. Examples include Killer D or Sammy the Bull. Yeah, Sammy the Bull was a mafioso who turned state's evidence and helped bring down John Gotti. Just FYI. 
A textonym is a word or name generated by a sequence of numbers on a phone keypad. For example, 2229 equals baby. The language, if you will, was called T9 for texting on nine keys, like texting back in the day before smartphones. And oh my God, Miranda was so fast at that. I, on the other hand, was not. Well, what about numbers on a calculator when you held it upside down (laughs) made words like shell oil? Or boobs. I don't know. I wonder if there's actually a name for that. If anyone out there knows, let us know. Okay, moving on. A toponym is a name for a place or location like Paris, London, Wrigley Field, or Yosemite National Park. I love all of those. And last but not least, a zoonym is just simply a name of an animal like giraffe, elephant, or sloth. I have to correct you. I think it's zoonym. Zoonym? Well, it's zoologist. 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 Because it's not a zoologist. Zoology, though. Zoology. <laughs> really? Are you saying yes. that? Zoologist. Zoology. It's not zoology. It is, too. Okay, whatever. A zoonym or zoonym. <laughs> okay, now it sounds dumb. And there you have it, guys. Names of names and things. If you have any to add to the name glossary, let us know. The name glossary can also be found on our website, babynames.com, if you want to reference it for the future. And now it's time for Celebrity Baby News. Well, John Legend and Chrissy Teigen have announced that baby number three is on the way. The All of Me singer and the model already have two children, four-year-old Luna and two-year-old Miles. Jen, what do you think goes with Luna and Miles? Porcupine. I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean porcupine? Pork you pine. <laughs> what about porcupine? I'm just being silly. Okay. Model actress Jodie Turner-Smith and actor Joshua Jackson had their baby in April, but have been extremely quiet about the event. Until now, in a British Vogue article, Jodie discusses her four-day labor. Boy, I thought mine was bad at two days. And how they managed a birth at home during quarantine. So look that up. Any baby names yet? Or do we know that? No, no baby names. They're keeping everything very quiet. Okay. This next couple kept their pregnancy secret too, which is easier to do in quarantine than the red carpet. Ed Sheeran and wife's Cherry Seaborn just announced that they are expecting a baby at the end of the summer. Well, we're almost there. I know. This quarantine business sure made it hard for the paparazzi to get the 411 on our preggy couples. That's for sure. Bindi Irwin, TV personality and daughter of the late Steve Irwin, is expecting her first child with husband Chandler Powell. Both Bindi and Chandler have careers in wildlife, and guess where they met? The Australia Zoo. Where else? The zoo was founded by... Where else? Stop. The zoo was founded by Bindi's grandparents, Steve's parents, Bob and Lynn Irwin. I did not know. Anywho, Chris Pratt and Katherine Schwarzenegger announced that they have named their new baby girl Lila, L-Y-L-A, Maria Schwarzenegger Pratt. That's a mouthful. I know. <laughs> Lila Maria Pratt is not a mouthful. They had to put the Schwarzenegger in there, huh? Okay. It's pretty safe to assume that Maria is named after maternal grandmother Maria Shriver. Grandpa is, of course, the Terminator himself, Arnold. And speaking of married Austrians, I want to give a shout out to my daughter, Ronnie, who married this week her own Austrian, Bernard. Mazel tov to both of them. Mazel tov. Congratulations, Ronnie. Chef Duff Goldman and wife Johanna announced on Instagram that they have a little muffin on the way. Literally. Well, not literally. (laughs) But both were holding muffins in the pregnancy announcement. That's kind of cute. They are due in January of 2021. Congrats, Chef. Lastly, we are honored to announce that the Bella Twins, pro wrestlers and stars of the reality series 
total Bellas had their babies one day apart. That's amazing. How did they manage that? Got me, but you went on my honeymoon, remember? And you went on mine. <laughs> that really makes us sound weird. We could have figured that out if we had tried harder. Anyway, Brie had her baby boy on August 1st with hubby wrestler Daniel Bryan. They have a three-year-old baby with your favorite name, Jen, Birdie. I hate that. Anyway, I added it to the database because it is being used as a baby name, but I still advise against it. Oh, I still can't imagine a CEO named Birdie. Well, there was a Coco, Coco Chanel. Well, that was her nickname. Her real name is Gabrielle. Shut up. Anyway, I was thinking the new baby should be named Tweety. Wouldn't that be cute? How about Porcupine? <laughs> <laughs> That's I, I like Porcupine as much as I like Tweety or Birdie. So that's m my recommendation. Porcupine? <laughs> Porky for sure. I'll give you 500 bucks if they name their baby Porcupine. Okay, it's a deal. All right, so Nikki Bella had her baby on July 31st with her hubby Dancing with the Stars pro Artem Chignorinia. Damn, I meant to give you that name to say Chigrintsev, I think. Yeah, that's not so hard. They have not announced the name of this baby either. I wonder if they will do twinsy names. Mm, I'm excited to find out what they are, though. Yeah. I know. That's it for celebrity baby names in this episode. Remember to look at babynames.com and click celebrities in the menu to get up to the minute celebrity baby news. And next is Baby Names Q&A, where we take questions from you, our listeners. The first one came in over our message line, and here it is. My name is Rachel, and I'm from Kentucky. And I had always wondered about the name Paget, as in Paget Brewster from Criminal Minds. I had seen that there wasn't a description of it on your site and just wanted to see if you had any insight about it. And you can obviously use this on the podcast because I love it. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Now, Paget wasn't on our top 1,000 surnames list, but Page, P-A-G-E, was. And they both mean the same thing. Page and Paget are occupational surnames for someone who worked as a page. And a page was kind of like a personal assistant or what we call a gopher now. The ETT ending meant little or young, so probably referred to a boy page. So anyway, thanks, Rachel. I have added the name Paget to our database. And if you want to ask your question with your own voice, call our message line at 702-848-5510. Yeah, Mal, why don't you read the next one? Okay. Hello, my name is Autumn. I'm expecting a baby boy and I'm due towards the end of October. Mm -hmm. I have a few names picked out, but I'd like an opinion. My boyfriend's last name is Jimenez, and I've had trouble coming up with a name that I like, one that sounds good with the last name. However, I have picked out a few, and I would like a second opinion. Kobe Leon Jimenez, Lucas Leon Jimenez, or Elias Leon Jimenez. Please get back to me as soon as you can. Any ideas would be greatly appreciated. Hmm. Well, you know, of course, there's Kobe. And we need to talk about that, because do you guys think it's too early to name a baby Kobe? I don't think so. I think it's honorific. You don't think so? No. Kobe Jimenez. Yeah, I like that. Kobe's fine. Kobe Jimenez, or Kobe Leon Jimenez. I mean, obviously you like the name Leon, but I would probably go with Leo. I bet Leon's the father's name. Oh. I like the name Lucas. Always have. Or because I really like the name Luke. Luke Jimenez sounds like a cowboy. Luke Jimenez sounds OK, but Lucas Jimenez is too essy at the end of both names. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Now, my opinion is I prefer Elliot to Elias. And so that gets rid of that S. So Elliot Jimenez sounds pretty musical. I do like Kobe. Lucas is a little overused nowadays. So I went to babynames.com and used our collaborative filter, which is just a fancy name for that thing that says people who like this name also like, 
That's a collaborative filter. And here are some other names I came up with. Gabriel or Gabriel, Caleb, Gavin, Lando, or Desi. And I really like Desi Jimenez. Lando? Like Lando Calrissian? Who's Lando Calrissian? Oh my God, have you never seen the Star Wars saga? Not the recent ones. It's not in the recent one. I think it was Empire Strikes Back. Is it a character name? Yes. Well, it's also a Spanish name, meaning like famous land. Like Orlando. I think it comes from Orlando, so it's a nickname. Oh. Orlando would be kind of cool, too. Orlando Jimenez. Oh, I like Orlando as a name. Like Orlando Bloom. So, Autumn, we say Orlando Jimenez. Or Kobe. Or how about Kobe Orlando Jimenez? Cool. But anyway, thanks for writing. We've got some great episodes coming up, you guys. The next is going to be a two-parter on changing your name. And we have some special guests with that one. And like we said previously, we've got one coming up on gaming naming. So stay tuned. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And keep tuning in. Say goodbye, Mal. Goodbye, Mal. Love you. Love you. Talk to you later. (laughs) Bye. Bye.